Okay, now some other things to keep in mind. Uh, again, predators and the pedophiles that we're speaking about, for the most part, are social engineers or masters at social engineering. Now, what that simply means is a social engineer is somebody that can basically draw out important information without making it seem like that person's divulging important information. Now, as I said before, in the context of a hacker, for example, a hacker may call up a workplace or a business or even be working at that business and they're going to sit down and talk to five, five or six people at that business and ask them some questions you know they might get strike up a conversation with a coworker or what have you and say you know hey how you doing how was your vacation where'd you where'd you go to vacation or what's your favorite vacation spot or how's the kids doing what, what are your children's name is names again or um, you know how's your dog or what's your dog's name again or you know again whatever seemingly innocent questions however those types of, of questions can provide information for as most people again the statistics will will vary but the top three or four things that people use as passwords on their computer are going to be their child's name, pet's name, maybe the name of their favorite car, or their favorite vacation spot, things of that nature. So by striking up a conversation with a few people, finding these things out, now they have five, six, seven different um, very high prob probability of success five or six things they can go out and now try to hack that person's password. If they're able to actually hack into the system from the outside, again, they have some ammunition. Or if they're internal, again, they, it's, it, it's even easier for them to get into the systems. Same type of concept here applies when we're dealing with social engineers at the predator pedophile level. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Well, over time, again, these predators are masters at manipulation. They're going to go out and find people that are easy targets that they feel they can, they can manipulate and get information from quickly and easily, again, through social engineering. And they're very patient and they're very persuasive. So they're able to, over time, develop relationships with children, make them feel like they're special, make them feel like they're wanted, make them feel like they're, you know, this the king or queen of the world. And over time, build that esteem up of that person. Again, they're looking for easy targets. A lot of times, children that have low self-esteem. A lot of times... Maybe uh, parents don't pay much attention. You know, parents are not involved. In other words, the kids feel like they're maybe slighted or, or not, not part of the, uh, the family, no, no, no one to identify with. Well, the, the, uh, the, pet, the pedophiles and the predators, again, are going to very patiently persuade that child in, into becoming friends and, and divulge information. The social engineering comes into play where they might strike up a chat conversation and one day ask... Uh, the child, um, maybe where they, where they go to school or how they did in sports or this, that, and the other. And the child might divulge perhaps that they play, let's just throw something out there, the fact that they might play field hockey. Okay, as an example. Well, the predator, you can rest assured, is going to jot that information down. He may not know where that, that child plays field hockey yet, but he knows that's a piece of, uh, of the puzzle that he can can now file away. He may then a day later or a week later ask some other question like uh, where do you like to vacation and the child might say why well, go to so and so beach and he says well why do you go to that beach and they say well it's because it's close to where I live you know it's it's better than such, such and such a beach or I go to this park versus that park and this that and the other so by asking these questions he's now starting to develop a profile so he knows that um, the child goes to this particular park because it's close to their house well guess what you can go right into uh, any type of mapping software and fire up maps off of Google or any other uh, mapping software out there. And I, let me just give you a quick example of what I'm talking about here. We can go to maps.google.com. And as soon as this fires up here, maps.google.com, which probably you're familiar with already, so I'm not telling you anything new here. But let's just... Do a search for New Jersey. Okay, very quickly, it brings us over to New Jersey. 
and we can zoom out, we can zoom in, and let's just pick an area of the beach, just because we had talked about that previously. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit, move the map over, again we just click and drag. So as the person goes ahead and, and starts talking about themselves, he may be bringing up the, that person that predator or the pedophile may bring up a map and ask them questions. Well, do you go here or to go here? Or do you like to go this place instead or whatever the case might be? This park or that park? This school or that school? And as the child very innocently divulges little bits and pieces of information, it gets jotted down and he develops a profile until one day, you know, even if the child never says, I live at such and such a street, he can narrow it down very quickly. And with some of the mapping software that's out there nowadays, you can get an aerial view and you can zoom right down to a house level and hopefully no one's li <laughs> no one watching the video lives uh, in one of these houses because I'm, I'm just picking one at random but you know you can zoom right down to it see if um, it's a fenced in yard or if it's near any type of businesses or what the quickest uh, or, the, or the closest place to to, to uh, take someone to might be and it's it gets scary when you think of it from a, from a predator's point of view there's a lot of tools out there that make planning an attack very easy. So as uh, we back out here a moment, the scariest part is, let's say for instance, actually let me back out quite a bit. Okay, here, here the person is, let's say we have New Jersey here. The other person might be coming from Ohio or Kansas, just pick anywhere. We can click on the Get Directions link and I can go from Ohio to New Jersey and say get directions and basically it will give me door-to-door -door driving directions if I put an actual address in from one spot to the other it will give me driving directions door-to-door -door. so it allows that predator if they are, do in fact uh, get a hold of that person's address that child's address your child's address they can print out or map directions directly to your doorstep now you might say to yourself well how is that going to happen my child would never give away my address well, if you think back to a previous video that I talked about, where uh, we talked about worms and trojans and backdoor um, uh, pieces of software, it's very possible that through a very innocent conversation, again, becoming a master at manipulation, um, this pedophile might pose as another teenager and say, send a game or whatever to your child. That child installs the game. All of a sudden, the, the backdoor trojan that we talked about gets installed on the machine. Now any Word documents or any documents that are on that computer the predator, the pedophile now has access to including perhaps homework that might show an address or a check, checking, checkbook uh, software money management software that you may have on your computer anything that may show um, your address you may have, may have pictures, hundreds or thousands of pictures that pedophile can now browse through all those pictures, all those personal family photos pull them off the computer some of which might show an address, some of which might show a car license plate, some of which might show any type of personal information that can allow him or her to travel to your location. So these are things that, that um, I hope you're keeping in mind and understanding how they're all kind of tying in together. From a predator's point of view, everything they do is done to bring them closer to their victim, closer to the object of their desire. Now to get back to what I was talking about here, uh, again, through an innocent conversation, the, your child says, oh, I play field hockey. I, we play usually at, at this location, or we had a really bad day today. We played so-and-so school. Well, it doesn't take very many questions and very very, uh, very long for that person to figure out, okay, the person plays at you know wherever, so-and-so high school. And your child may later on down the road divulge the fact that, hey, this year I just made team captain, or I just made this, that, or the other. Well, here we go. Punch in an address. What this site will allow us to do is you could punch in an actual street address, city, state, and zip, and it will show you all the registered sex offenders around you or, or around that address. Let's just go ahead and type in uh, an address in general, just a city level. Let's try Newark, New Jersey, just uh, to give you an idea of what, what, what a, a search would look like. And go ahead and hit search. Now what happens is it will bring back a pin map that shows us all the registered sex offenders in that area. So...